I'm going to solve these systems using elimination. This is one algebraic process to get the coordinates x and y. That would be our solution to the system. So for elimination, it helps to have things we call lined up. So lining up meaning the x's are above the x's, the y's are above the y's, the equal signs above the equal sign, and the numbers on the right are lined up as well. If everything's all lined up nice like that, it usually pretty works, it works pretty well to use elimination to solve this, which is what we have, which is why this is a good system to use, or a good process to use for this system. What we're going to try and do is make opposites. So in order to get opposites here, we either need the x's to be the opposite number, the coefficients, or the y's. We could do either way. So one option that we have here, we have a 5x for the first one and a negative 1x on the bottom. So pretty easily I could make the bottom a negative 5x by just doing the whole bottom times 5. That would make it opposites with the top for the x's. Or looking at the 12y there, I could make the top equation have a negative 12y by simply multiplying the top equation by negative 4. That would make opposites with the y's. So either way we do this, it'll work out just fine. We just need to pick one way and stick with it. I like how the 1 is already negative here, so I'm going to just stick with that. So versus multiplying by a negative. That often leads to errors when you multiply by negatives. So for the bottom, I'm going to do times 5 to the whole thing. That will give us negative 5x plus 60y equaling 5, 51 times 5 is 255. So then we just need to take the first equation, and I actually put it next to underneath the new equation here. So I'm just going to slide this equation down. So it's 5x plus 3y equaling negative 3. And now we have opposites with the x's, so now we just simply add. So add those two equations together, and that's going to eliminate one of the two variables. That's the whole idea. We're going to eliminate the x's because they are opposites. So there's no more x's left. That's the whole point. We get 63y equaling 252 after you add the 255 plus the negative 3. To solve this for y, we're going to simply divide both sides by the 63. So that will just give us our value of y. So it's pretty quick to get to right to a, a one part of the coordinate here. What's often more work is going back and finding the other coordinate. So we can use either equation, whatever one looks easier for you, and we're going to put the 4 in for y and find the x. I'm going to pick the first one, just, just to pick one. So 5x plus 3 times the y equaling the negative 3. This will make a two-step. So 5x plus 12 equaling negative 3. I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. So we get negative 15 on the right, 5x on the left. Dividing by 5 gets us our x-coordinate, which is negative 3. So our answer is negative 3, comma, 4. The x and the y to make the solution. A couple more examples here. For the next one, again, we've got options. We can make opposites with the x's or with the y's. I'm going to do a little, little bit different this time. I'm going to do the y's just to show you can. Even though the negative 1x would be make, make it a pretty easy negative 4x by doing just times 4, I'm going to do the y's instead just to show that it's possible. So for the top, I'm going to multiply that by a negative 5. The reason is that will make it a positive 15y up top, which will cancel out with the bottom um, negative 15y. So multiplying the whole top by negative 5 is going to make it 5x plus 15y equaling negative 5 times uh, 16 is negative 80. Now I'm going to add those two together, and the y's will eliminate because they make 0y. So 9x on the left equaling 125 minus 80 is, or plus a negative 80, I should say, is 45. Divide both sides by 9, and we get our x, which is 5. Then, again, plug back into either equation. I'm going to go back to the original. So negative 1 times 5 minus 3y equals 16. So negative 5 minus 3y equals 16. Adding the 5 to both sides gets us negative 3y equals 21. Divide that by negative 3 and you get the y-coordinate, which is negative 7. So our answer is 5, negative 7, the x and y-coordinate there. All right, one more example. So for this one, it's a little bit trickier because it's not already lined up. It's not x's, y's equals numbers for both equations. The bottom equation is x's, y's equals numbers. Um, but the top equation, we've got to move something around. So the equal sign is kind of the wrong spot. The 2x needs to get moved next to the x. 
So to do that, we're going to subtract it. So put this off to the side. So negative 4x equals negative 22 plus 2y. If I subtract 2y from both sides, that will help get things lined up. So it'll be negative 4x minus 2y equaling negative 22. Now it's all lined up with what the bottom one looks like. So I'm going to line that up underneath the other equation. And now I'm going to look for opposites. So a bunch of steps here to start this one. So I see a negative 4x in the bottom. I'm going to try to make it into a positive 4x up top by doing times 2. So that would be a positive 4x minus 8y and a 92 on the right. And I'm going to add those two together to make the x's eliminate. You get negative 10y, and that would just be uh, 70 on the right side. Dividing by negative 10 will get us y. y equaling negative 7. Then to get x, again, plug into either equation. I'm going to use the very first one, the original. So negative 4x uh, equals negative 22 plus 2 times negative 7. So uh, this will be negative 22 minus 14. So negative 36 equals negative 4x divided by negative 4 is going to get us to x. x equals positive 9. So our solution is going to be 9, negative 7.